The world of film criticism is an interesting one, filled with different opinions and people looking at what makes a good or bad film. It's really grown over the years, to the point where everybody with a keyboard or a camera can become a film reviewer of some sort. However, in this case, I'm focusing on actual serious professional critics. Now, the question is, what are the best film critics? The ones with the understanding of the medium and with the ability to critique them. In my opinion, the best critics are not necessarily those I agree with the most, but rather those who are able to give their argument, and whether you agree with them or not, it's understandable where they're coming from. Now, various critics look at films in different ways. Some decide a film's quality if it manages to absorb them intellectually and through analytical reasons. They dissect what the director is trying to say, rather than how the story is told on screen. And that's certainly acceptable, though I will be honest and say I'm not fond of Andrew Bazin's writings, no matter how important he is to the history of film criticism. That man cannot simply sit down and watch something. No, he had to put his pseudo-intellectual philosophies onto every film, and that's as far away from my style as you can get. There are those who gravitate to that way of thinking, but it's just not for me. Then there are those critics who see film as an entertainment and escapism, meant to either take the audience away to another world and show them a different taste of reality. That's the kind of criticism that is more to my style, and the way most critics function, in particular my favorites. My favorite film critic is Mark Commode, who provides film reviews for BBC Radio, and the reason for that is even when I disagree with him, he gives understandable reasoning behind his opinions. His commentary is entertaining while still providing intelligent film criticism and insightful comments. When he loves a film, you can feel how passionate he is about it, and the enthusiasm is almost infectious. He also does not look down on a film because of its style or genre. He will treat a film like Mary Poppins with the same respect he would something like The Exorcist. This is a man with an immense love for B-grade horror flicks and is not going to disparage something for going after a specific audience. He also won't let his distaste for a certain director or format get in the way of a film he would like. Multiple times over the years, Commode has respected hatred for the works of Guy Ritchie, and yet he still walked into Sherlock Holmes with an open mind and gave it a very positive review. Same with 3D, which he continually makes the point of criticizing as being one of modern cinema's worst tendencies, but he still praised the use of it in Martin Scorsese's Hugo, and was impressed by how it was used in that film. People love seeing critics bash a film they hate, because it really is them at their most entertaining. So if you love that sort of thing, definitely check out his reviews of the Transformers series, which are classic. Overall, Mark Commode provides great criticism with an understanding of the medium and entertaining commentary. Another favorite critic is James Bradinelli, who was one of the pioneering internet film critics from the very early 90s. He eventually made a name for himself with his fair reviews that take into consideration what filmmakers are trying to accomplish. He outlines clearly what he likes and dislikes about a film, and in a way, he is the critic I've noticed who thinks more like your average moviegoer who wants to see good films up on the screen. He grades each genre accordingly and with a certain expertise about filmmaking. What's particularly interesting is that unlike most film critics, he has a degree in engineering. Like Commode, he has a passion for all sorts of films, though he does have an obvious affection for good fantasy, much like how Commode has a particular appreciation for well-crafted horror films. When talking about film criticism, it's hard not to bring up the two most famous critics, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. The film critics for the Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sometimes respectively they both teamed up in 1975 to start a film review show, in which both of them would discuss new releases. This concept worked not only because the two of them worked well together, but also because it showed that it was alright to have differing opinions and debate it in an intelligent manner. Both Siskel and Ebert had an equal love for cinema, but they also looked at films differently. Siskel was more about the details, while Ebert paid more attention to the overall picture. Both their opinions were valid even when disagreeing, yet it was definitely fun when they got into arguments with one another. When they praised a film like Hoop Dreams, it allowed it to get more widespread attention. The opposite effect has happened too. When they both expressed a massive hatred for I Spit on Your Grave, I think their major panning of the film is what made it such a cult hit in later years. Otherwise, it likely would have been forgotten like most schlocky sexploitation pictures at the time. I actually preferred Ebert as a television personality more than a writer. He had some strong articles, but lots of film reviews tended to spend too much time on plot summary rather than actually going in-depth on his opinion. 
Unfortunately, Gene Siskel passed away in 1999, leaving a gap on the television series. After a number of rotating guests, Richard Roper filled in the seat, and he was a good pair-up with Ebert. The conversations with each other were insightful, but the disagreements also led to funny arguments. He brought his own style, rather than copying Siskel, and it fit well. However, when Ebert lost his voice, he had to depart from the show, and eventually, in 2008, the show switched guests, and with no involvement from Roger Ebert. Ben Mankiewicz was solid enough, but there was something false about Ben Lyons, and he never quite did it for me. It just felt like he was wearing his father's clothes, and there was zero chemistry with his co-host. Not to mention, his backing up of his film opinion was just off the wall strange. When asked what his favorite James Bond film was, he said it was Goldeneye because he loved the video game. Uh, okay? Fortunately, the show was retooled again with Michael Phillips and A.O. Scott, who brought back some integrity and serious discussion to the show. However, At the Movies ended after a year. In January of 2011, Roger Ebert launched a new series, with Christy Lemire and Ignaty Vishkovsky as the host. This pairing was an interesting one, seeing as both of them look at film in completely different ways. Lemire sees the medium as meant to entertain the audience, which is very close to my own thoughts. Hence, she has more of a preference towards mainstream fare. Ignaty sees film in a more analytical way, so he gravitates towards praising more avant-garde pieces of cinema. These two completely different critics actually leads to fascinating discussions, with my favorite being their separate takes on Jean-Luc Godard's film Socialism. The show, unfortunately, was cancelled, and with Roger Ebert's unfortunate passing two years ago, the Ebert legacy is mainly relegated to his website. With the end of Atla Movies and other movie review shows, it seems that avenue has shifted onto YouTube. Schmoes No, consisting of Christine Harloff and Mark Ellis, are a talented duo who represent the everyman, and I say that as a compliment. They have a good sense of humor and match provide articulate reasons for liking and disliking a certain work, with a point system that is actually very unpredictable. In many ways, their camaraderie makes them almost the modern equivalent to Siskel and Ebert, and worthy successors for what they sought to display on their show. My only gripe is their constant misuse of the term remake. Sorry, huge pet peeve of mine. The thing is, this movie is a comedy. It really is a comedy. There is so much stuff going on and it's the way his delivery and the back and forth with everybody and it's it's stuff you don't want to laugh at but you have to because this stuff is so bizarre you know you bring up comedy and that's one of the things that you i knew if by this point in his career what a fantastic and versatile actor leonardo dicaprio is the one thing that i wasn't aware of is how well he can commit to physical comedy oh, there man. is a scene in here where he channels jim carrey from 1994 yep. Jeremy Johns is also a fun character, with funny observations find their way into both his positive and negative reviews. I also like his quick editing approach, which gives them an extra dose of energy. First of all, I like the animation in this movie. I think it's all done on computers, but it's meant to look like stop motion animation, so the stop motion animation made it feel like it's actually Legos. Like someone has a camera that's zoomed in on these tiny ass Lego people, and you're watching their world operate, and it's all awesome because they all build things like they're real Legos, which just now I realize I just said that Lego people built Legos. I'm not crazy. You know what I mean, you know, it's cool seeing Lego things get built. Finally, I have to say what I think is the worst form of criticism, though it's something that is sweeping more the general public than professional critics who know better. And that is nitpicking. It honestly feels like people just walk into a film with a notepad and just look into every teensy little thing. People actually looking for plot holes that are not actually there. Yeah, sounds silly, doesn't it? Watch the film and let it wash over you. Don't spend the whole time looking for things to hate, otherwise you're not going to like any film ever again. In fact, no matter what the film, I'll try to watch it with a positive attitude. Unfortunately, people are cynical these days and have to nitpick every tiny detail. There's nothing wrong with analyzing a film, but don't nitpick, it's bad film criticism. There's also the idea of walking into a movie with an open mind. That's great, but my strategy is I walk into a movie with very high expectations. The reason is that every time I walk into a screening room, I feel this sense of excitement. What am I going to watch? What is the filmmaker going to wash over me? Even with the constant marketing that surrounds us and trailers we consume, those are not a proper indication of what the final film is like, since so those are made by the studio's marketing team rather than the filmmaker. Look at Frozen, for example. The trailer made it look like some dopey Kate Hudson romantic comedy. 
when the final film ended up being nothing like it. Honestly, I think it's wrong to criticize a movie and declare it bad sight unseen. Until we watch the whole thing from beginning to end, we don't know what the final product will look like. And it's worth remembering that filmmakers, even ones you dislike, put a lot of sweat and blood into their projects. Nobody sets out to make a bad movie, so why do we constantly worry that they've done so? I actually think it's ridiculous to walk into a movie with a security blanket every time. We should not be going to the movies with fear. We should be going with a glow in our eyes and a sense of wonder. If the final film was underwhelming, that happens. But at least you gave it the chance to impress you rather than poo-pooing it and not giving it a proper shot. And if you dislike a movie, don't be insulting towards the filmmakers. That's just disrespectful. I also think Rotten Tomatoes can be a dangerous tool. It's fine for compiling a bunch of critics reviews into one database, but the calculated number at the top just creates the idea that a movie is good or bad with little room for a differing point of view. When a film has 35% on there, it only means that 35% of people liked it. You could be one of those 35%. Be adventurous. Watch something that might be outside of your comfort zone. You never know what might end up being one of your favorites. See you next time.